honor and the praise. Can you help me celebrate my spiritual father and mother in the Lord, our pastor, our bishop, Bishop Brian J. Pearson, Pastor Deb. Come on, can we celebrate our leaders? Come on, come on. Bishop Brister always says it like this. When you are under A-level anointing, you get A-level blessings. Can we thank God for the anointing that runs down on us because of our leader? To God be the glory. I'm telling you, um, everybody from the RDU campus says hello. (laughs) We are so excited to be worshiping here this morning. I want to call us to a passage of scripture. Um, in Acts chapter number eight, somewhat familiar. Thank God for my wife and my two children. Thank God, and and y'all, we're expecting, so we got another one on the way. So thank God. Acts, Acts chapter number nine, verse number eight. And nine, it says, Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Verse nine, and he was there, or he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. For for this next couple of moments, I want to use as a sermonic topic in this vision month for Mount Zion, I need you to help me talk to your neighbor really quickly and say, no more blind spots. Come on to the neighbor on the other side, look at him really firmly and say, no more blind spots. Beloved, last Sunday, Bishop declared in this vision month that we are, of course, in this new growth season, that we would have eye-opening experiences. Hallelujah. Situations in which God was going to open our eyes like Hagar and see his ultimate supply. I am totally and unapologetically convinced that God, during this season of new growth, he wants to utilize every part of your life. Hear me, God wants you to be used totally for his glory. God, if he's going to use us totally for his glory, hunt your neighbor and say, we have to be totally free. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because in John chapter number eight, verse 36, the Bible tells us that, so if the son sets you free, mm mm-hmm, you will be free indeed. Uh, uh, the, the, the other part of this says you will be free through and through, which means no matter where we look in your life, there will be freedom. Uh, when, when we look on your job, there'll be freedom. When we look in your bank account, there will be freedom. When we look at your family, there will be freedom. Matter of fact, if you get too close to me, you might experience the freedom that I have. Why? Because I'm going to be free through and through. God wants you totally delivered so that he can deepen your discernment and increase your ability to intercede. Let me say that again. God wants you totally free so that he can deepen your discernment and increase your ability to intercede. 
your ability to discern in this period and in this season is vital to your overall impact and success in the kingdom of God. So many Christians are coming to church but have no discernment. Mm -hmm. Living life with no discernment. Making decisions with no discernment. Because discernment is related to your ability to judge rightly. So many Christians in this season of making New Year's resolutions, New Year's paths, and New Year's plans, they have mistakenly not had discernment in their life. And so as a result, they are going to continue to repeat and repeat the mistakes and the cycle of the previous season and be held in more and more bondage and lost in the cycle of defeat. But the devil is a liar this morning. God is opening the eyes of our heart so that we can have restored vision. Hallelujah. This is the year that there will be no more blind spots, no more sneak attacks, no more back attacks, no more blinded attacks, and no more setbacks. This is the year you will move and shift. Hallelujah. You will move and shift, and there will be no accidents and no incidents. Why? Because by removing the blind spots, God is going to increase your vision and your ability to discern so you can make the right decision in the right season at the right time and you will accomplish your goal. Someone say, Lord, increase my discernment. This morning, we are looking at Saul <laughs> and Saul being a, when he was converted to Paul, a heavy impact for the kingdom of God. This morning, as we look at Saul, he is approaching, uh, he is approaching uh, the city known as Damascus. Uh, Saul was a part of the religious leadership of the church, and he prosecuted and he persecuted Christians and those that followed Jesus Christ. Saul was educated. Saul was well learned. Saul knew the scriptures. Saul had great influence. Saul had a good living. Saul had a good life. But Saul had blind spots. Mm -hmm. it, uh, now, before we pick up our rocks and throw them at Saul this morning, hold on. Let's take a moment and look at your life. Because the truth is, you are also living with major blind spots. Hold on. Keep looking at me. Stay right here. If you are waking up every day and not seeking the face of God in prayer, you, my friend, are setting yourself up for a blind spot experience. Hmm. You are looking at major decision after major decision, and you are not seeking the counsel and wisdom of God. You, my friend, are setting yourself up for a blind spot experience. Uh, living your life around fear. You've built your decisions, your mindset, your, your attitude is all about fear. Shutting people down, shutting people out. You, my friend, are living for a blind spot experience. Stuck in a cycle of saying bad decision after bad decision, you keep attracting the same kind of people, the same kind of way, you are setting yourself up for a blind spot experience. Constantly living life for the approval and the claps of others. You, my friend, are setting yourself up for a blind spot experience. God is here this morning to set us free from everything Every blind spot experience the devil wants to use to destroy your future. Hunt your neighbor and say, my future is sure. My future is strong because blind spots are being removed. 
yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so we got to take those blind spots away. So God is here to deliver us from these blind spots. Here it is, point number one for those of us who are writing notes. God is here to deliver us from low-grade authorizations. God is here to deliver us from low-grade authorizations. Where you find that? It's right here in the same chapter that we're reading in the context. Uh, Bishop always says the best way to understand is scripture is in context. So Acts chapter number 9 verses 1 and 2, we see at the beginning it says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asking letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus. What are we seeing here? We're seeing that Paul, who was first Saul, goes to the high priest and requests letters to go and kill the Christians in the Damascus church. Well, the truth is this, you all. He sought the authorization of man instead of seeking the higher authorization of Jesus Christ. See, because when you embrace the authorization of a lower grade, you will get a lower grade a result. See, when you embrace the character of God, when you embrace the character of who Jesus is, you will begin to say to yourself, I need the approval of God and God only. If God didn't send it, I don't want it. If God didn't say it, I'm not speaking it. If God, if my flesh wants it, I don't want it. Why? Because only what is in Christ, that's what I need in my life. Jesus in the morning. Saint, old saints used to say it like that. Jesus in the midday and Jesus when the sun goes down. Why am I saying that? Because when you seek the approval of man, you're going to get man results. But when you seek the approval of heaven, you're going to get heavenly results results. Hebrews chapter number 12 verse 2 tells us and helps us. It says, it says, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Why am I taking the time to point us to this scripture? Simply put, Jesus is the author, which means Jesus wrote it. And whatever Jesus writes, he will sustain. Whatever Jesus speaks, it will happen. That's why I cannot seek low grade authorization connected to a high grade father. Jesus is the only voice I need to authorize where I'm going. Matter of fact, the high priest can't create your path. The high priest can't create the wind. The high priest can't stop the rain. But my God can supply all of my needs on my way to my place. Why would I seek the approval of my neighbor when I'm connected to Elohim? Why would I seek the approval of a doctor when I know Jehovah Rapha? Why would I seek the approval of the bank when I have Jehovah Jireh? I have everything I need and it's in Jesus I trust. So God is here to deliver us from low grade authorization. Pastor So, the Lord said, he said, in this season, my people can't get caught in compromised opinions. Because what we're trying to do is mix what the world says with what God says and trying to live in the middle. No, 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 no. For God, I live and for God, I Die. We cannot mix the opinions of man with the agenda of heaven. Glory be to God. I don't care what the culture says. Jesus is the only culture I need. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. So that's why we have to seek the counsel of God. Matthew 6, 33. Come on, Bible readers. You already know what I'm going. You know what I'm about to say? But seek first kingdom of God and his righteousness which means his way 
of doing things. So God deals with my low grade or my desire for low grade authorization by grounding me. He, he grounds me. He, he grounds me. Where, where do you get this from? Well, right here in Acts chapter number nine, verse number four, it says after Saul comes in contact with Jesus, it says right here in the beginning of verse four, it says, then he fell where? To the ground. He fell to the ground because God will knock you off your horse and put you on the ground. Now, now, don't look at this process of grounding you as punishment. This grounding that's happening is your reset. Hold on. God grounds you to reset you. Uh, he's resetting your priorities. He's resetting the words you speak out of your mouth. He's resetting the values in your life. He's resetting the money. He's resetting your mind. Why? Because when God resets you, you go back to who you truly are. Don't fight the grounding process. God is trying to make something out of you. And no, 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 no. Let me back up. Uh, when I was growing up, I'm about to show my age. My parents used to say stuff like this when I got in trouble. So this is for the folk in the balcony. Uh, my parents used to say something like this. It said, son, you're grounded. Uh, and what they did was they put me in my room. They said, go to your room and don't come out till I tell you. Now, now, Jeff, what they did was they went in my room and they, I'm really about to show my age now. They, they pulled out the Sega Genesis. They, hold on. They grabbed the, the, the Nintendo, you know, the one with the cartridge you gotta, and then you put it back in. Yeah, they, they, they took the Nintendo out. They, they took the Sega Genesis out. Why? Because in the grounding process, they were removing the luxuries. See, many of us want to avoid the grounding process in God because we want to still keep the luxuries of life. When God is saying to you, I got to strip you from your luxuries so you can really find out what's necessary. See, you still want to hold on to that old habit, to that old boo. And God said, no, I'm trying to ground you. That's why he ain't calling back. God's grounded you. That's why you didn't get that job because God God is grounding you because when you come to the true realization that all I need is God in this grounding process when you get up from here your reset is about to be your next step into your level of greatness I need everybody I know you're sitting just take one foot prophetically and say I'm stepping up why because the reset made me better the reset made me stronger the reset made me wiser now I know I don't need y'all's claps all all I need is his yes. Why? Because one word from God can change my life. God's Kusar, he's trying to get you back to who you really are. He's trying to get you back to who you really are. Because the last season you just went through altered your identity. But God is grounding you to bring you back to who you really are. Ha, le, lu, ya. So, so not only is God delivering us from these desires for these low grade for these low-grade authorizations. But point number two, God is delivering us from lawless ambition. Mm -hmm. Lawless ambition. Where did you get this from? Verse number two, I read it earlier. And right there in the middle it says, he found any who were of the way. Remember I told you that Saul was seeking out to find, to persecute, and to kill Christians who were a part of the faith, 
who were of Jesus Christ. Come on, Bible geeks, Bible readers. The early church, one of the words that they used to title who they were was the way. Remember, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So when they say here that Paul or Saul was going after those that were in the way, we know that he was seeking Christians to kill. Now, the way, I'm going to see if someone can get this, the way interrupted his way. Because some of us woke up this morning and we had a way. <laughs> we had a way that we wanted to do it. But when God's way gets in your way, God is trying to deal with the ambition and desires in your heart. <sighs> because could it be the ambition that you woke up with does not match the law of heaven? And so God will use situations and things to deal with the lawlessness of your ambition. Let me help you make sense. See, the truth is when you are walking in a certain direction, you might be walking. You came to church. You came here to worship the Lord. But you also saying, who can I get a phone number from before I leave here? See, 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 watch, watch. You were headed in the right way but you had the wrong ambition in your heart because it could be you could be going in the right direction but your heart has some stuff that God's got to deal with that anger that backbite that unforgiveness you came here talking about I'm gonna love everybody but God wants to deal with the unforgiveness in your soul why because it could be that you're walking in the right direction Saul going to Damascus but you have the wrong agenda in your heart and God said I want to deal with the ambition that's inside of you so when you walk the right way and when you show up show up representing me you show up representing the kingdom you show up representing the agenda of the kingdom God wants to deal with the lawlessness of your ambition Jesus hallelujah because our ambition must be cleaned through the word of God. Hear me, let me say that again. Your ambition must be cleaned through the word of God. Jesus, in John chapter number 15, uh, he's talking to his disciples in verse number three. He says, now ye are cleaned through the word which I have spoken unto you. See, the word of God has a way of cleaning your ambition. Oh, okay. Let me let, let me date myself one more time. Uh, I grew up in a time in which the washing machine had this little thing in the center. Uh, when you opened up that washing machine, uh, there was this thing in the center. Now you go and shop for a washing machine. Ain't nothing in the center. It's just I'm looking. What's going to get clean in here? Because I'm used to looking into the washing machine. Some of y'all still got one. I, I feel you. <laughs> and, and, and there's this thing in the middle called the agitator. Uh-huh. And uh, what happened when you throw them clothes in, that thing starts. That thing in the middle, it, man, it's, it's moving. And I'm looking at the washing machine my wife got in the house. I'm like, what is this cleaning? I don't know. The reason is when you try to live life without the agitation of the word, you're not getting clean. You trying to come to church and get clean, that ain't good enough. You trying to sing on the praise team and try to get clean, that ain't good enough. You trying to serve as an usher and try to get clean, that ain't good enough. It's only when you go into the word of God that you can get the agitation. Yep. Put some bleach on it, Jesus. Put some more detergent in it, Jesus. If it don't come out in the wash, it'll come out in the rinse. Keep me in the machine until the cycle gets all the way 
have done. Wash me through and through by the blood of Jesus. I need somebody to reapply the blood to your life and say, clean me, Jesus, this day. Clean my heart. Clean my ambition. Clean my mind. Clean the thoughts I think. Oh, God, it's me, oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh, Lord. I need the agitation of your word. It's only when I get in the word I find out that I'm prideful, that I have unforgiveness. And when I get in the word, I understand I got to deal with this disobedient, wretched man I am. But when you come out of the word of God, although you go in dirty, you will come out as pure gold. Look at your name and say, stay in the process. Stay in the wash. Your best days are still in front of you you ain't seen nothing yet somebody give God glory for the next 10 seconds and thank him for your walk so what God will do he will when we were dealing with the authorization he grounded us. But because he's dealing with our ambition, he guards us. Watch what he does. In verse number seven, it says that the men who were with Saul stood speechless. <laughs> God is shutting down every other voice so that you only hear his word. And he's guarding you against what other people might be saying about you. That's why this might be a lonely season for you. They may not call you back. Why? Because God is cleaning you and he's guarding you. Thank you, God. Because sometimes I think guarding looks like a, a big dog standing at the front door. No, God said, no, I'm just closing everybody's mouth. So you don't hear any other influences so that when you go through this, you will be truly clean. And you won't be dependent upon the opinion of humanity about what I'm doing in your life. They had nothing to do with your existence. They have nothing to do with your issue. They have nothing to do with where you are going. It's God that holds your future. It's God who holds your hope. And God said, I need to be the only voice that speaks in this season. Stay close to the word yes. you hear me yes. says stay close to the word because what happens is so many of us have become addicted to noise hold on hold on hold on pastor Ted uh, uh, I, I, I know some people who can't stand to be by themselves Soon as they get in the car, they pick up the phone and try to call somebody. Soon as they get home, they're trying to call. They can't stand to be by themselves. When God is saying, I'm trying to shut down the clutter. So I can do a new thing in your life. I'm trying to get rid of all your blind spots. And I'm guarding you against the noise. Oh. And so uh, we see an example of this. Even when we look at Samuel with the prophet Eli. In 1 Samuel chapter number 3, verse 1, the time in which Samuel was with Eli in the temple. In the Bible at the B clause, it says, there was no open vision over the house. There was no open vision, which means there were blind spots everywhere, BJ. There, there, there were blind spots in the temple. 
There were blind spots in the church. There were blind spots in the city. There was blind spots everywhere. Why am I taking the time for us to understand this? It's because during a time where there are blind spots, God's, tr God's trying to wake somebody up in the house. So he finds Samuel. And the, the Bible goes on to say right here in chapter number three in Samuel, first Samuel, it says that the voice of the Lord spoke to Samuel, calling his name Samuel, Samuel. Samuel wakes up, runs to Eli and says, Eli, did you call me? Eli said, no, boy, go back to sleep. Eli runs back to his bed and says, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel wakes up, runs to Eli and says, Eli, did you call me? He said, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Samuel goes back to bed. Samuel wakes up and hears the voice again. says, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel wakes up, runs to Eli and says, and Eli in this time, he says, ah, that's not me. That's God speaking your name next time ask him I am your servant so Samuel goes back hear me when I say this ladies and gentlemen we are in a time in which God is trying to wake up the people of the house of God so that we can hear his voice again I know I was only going to get two claps with that because the truth is he only needs to wake up a few of us to get the whole house up you might be the only one in your house, but I declare that you have an anointing on your life that when you hear God's voice this time, you're going to change the trajectory of your whole generation. Your bloodline's about to get changed because you heard the voice of God. And it's in the word of God that blind spots are removed. God is not only delivering us from low grade, authorization he's not only delivering us from lawless ambition but God lastly I'm about to take my seat God is delivering us from limited access he's delivering us from limited access where you get this from well right here in verse number three in Acts chapter number nine it says, as he, this is Saul, journeyed, he came near Damascus. He couldn't go in, he could only go near Damascus. Because some blind spots in your life will keep you from going in your place of promise. <laughs> and so some blind spots will only get you near, but blind spots won't take you in. Ooh. And it was until Jesus dealt with the blind spots in Saul that Saul was not able to go in to Damascus. Whoa, hallelujah. This is the year, Mount Zion, that you your family your children your company your money your mind your mental health we going in we not going near we going in I wish I had somebody in somebody's section that looked down their row and said I'm going in you going in we going in we all going in. We ain't leaving nobody behind on this one because we all going in. Because we gonna deal with these blind spots and we are not going to be limited in our access of the promise God has for me. Oh, I forgot to tell you what Damascus means. It means a well watered place. <laughs> Which means God is about, I ain't ready yet, Come on, hold that. Uh, God is about to take you into a well watered place. Hold on, somebody just missed that. Let me say it again. Damascus was a very wide place. It was the capital. Damascus was a very wealthy place because it was the capital. All commerce went through Damascus. And also, it was a very watered place. Well, wide because it was created. Mm -hmm, I got that. Wealthy because of all the money that was in transaction. But it was watered, which means that came from God. I'm about to, I'm about to tear this whole entire 
pulpit up. Let me tell you something. God is about to take you to a place that he's about to maintain. God's about to take you to a place where he's going to do the watering. He's going to do the increase. I need somebody to take your left foot and stretch it out and say, I'm going in. Yep. I'm going to walk right up in there to this new place that God has for me. Why? Because I'm removing the blind spots in my life. Me, you, we, we all going Notice, notice, Saul only goes in, Pastor Kid, he only goes in to the city because he was guided. Mm -hmm. The Bible says his friends took him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Hold on, I don't want to, I don't want you to lose your shout. Uh, but let me help you because in my head I was thinking that God was going to deliver Pastor Hood uh, Saul's blindness before he goes into Damascus because I'm thinking I'm going in Lord let me go in with my eyes but God is saying this he said yes I dealt with Saul's blind spots inwardly because I was able to let him know that I am the Lord, that God. He, he, he dealt with his low grade authorization on the inside because Saul said, oh yeah, you are the Lord. What can I do? What must I do? If you read the context of the story, you see that Saul became humble. Saul put down all of his desires for worldly things and he was now willing to follow the voice of God. Let me tell you something, this next season that you're about to walk into called Damascus although it's wide although it's wealthy and although it is watered God said you're going to come into this thing blind because I want you to walk by faith into this new land and you're going to have to trust my guided hand to get you all the way there you've been distracted and now I got your focus you've been going this way and that way but now I got your focus I need you to put your hand out and say God wherever you you lead me I will follow all I need to do is hear your voice and I will walk I will run I'm guided by the hand of God somebody shout glory somebody shout hallelujah although I'm blind I'm gonna get there although I might be weak I'm still gonna overcome although I ain't got no money I'm still gonna get approved Although I might be sick, I'm still going to run the race. Why? Because I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall come. Even though I'm blind, I'm going to get there. Even though I can't see, I'm still going to get the victory. So, I'm almost done. So, now if you read the story in context and you keep reading in verse numbers 10, 11, and 12, stay right there. We're almost there. Stay right there. <laughs> 10, 11, and 12. You see that God <laughs> has spoken to this guy named Ananias in the city of Damascus and said, I need you to go to the street called Straight. And you're going to find this gentleman by the name of Saul. He has seen you in a vision and he knows you're coming. And I need you to lay hands on him so that he might see again and get his sight. In other words, this new place God is taking you, he's already prearranged, pre-scheduled, pre-authorized. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a setup 
for me to get my vision back. It's a setup so I can see again. I'm about to go in and although I'm blind, God has already worked it out. All I need to do is trust his hand and I know that I will become with new vision and with new eyes. I need you to touch your neighbor and say I'm about to get new vision and I'm about to get new eyes. Why? Because God has already dealt with my blind spots and now my February is looking better my March is looking brighter my April is looking like freedom my July is looking like overcoming my December I can't even begin to put into words eyes have not seen ears have not heard nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for you somebody scream to your God cause your greatness is on the way I'm reminded when I was a little boy and I got my first car it was a Dodge Acclaim this Dodge Acclaim was really ugly and really nasty but when I got that Dodge Acclaim I was so grateful that I was able to pull off when I wanted to pull off and pull in when I wanted to pull in now this Dodge Acclaim my dad said I need to add something to your Dodge Acclaim pull your car right over here and he went and got this mirror and he put it on my rear view mirror and he said this is so that you can see what's in your blind spot every time you start going I want you to be able to see what's in your blind spot if my father had enough wisdom to put a mirror on my mirror how much more wisdom does God have to put something on you so you can check your blind spot no more blind spots I will be able to see the devil coming from a mile away devil shoot your best shot I see you coming no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper I'm about to walk into my overflow I'm about to walk into my anointing somebody shout somebody scream no more blind spots no more blind spots I have tasted and I have seen that the Lord he is good somebody bless the Lord somebody bless the Lord open up your mouth and bless your God now No more sneak attacks. No more setbacks. High five your neighbor and say no more sneak attacks. And no more setbacks. No more sneak attacks. No more setbacks. I'm being set up for my victory. I'm being set up for my more. Somebody scream more. More power. More joy. Oh, anointing. I feel my help. I feel my help. Thank you, Jesus. Now unto him who is
Everyone standing. Christians are praying. Every head bow. Every eye blows. Every head bow. Every eye close. I'll wait for you. Heads bow. Eyes close. That's all right, my sister. That's what life sounds like when there's no more blind spots. That's what life sounds like. God will help you put a plan in place that will safeguard you against every sneak attack of the devil. For some of you, it's a plan around your finances. For some of you, it's a plan around your marriage. For some of you, it's a plan around your business. But today, we declare no more blind spots. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your anointing. And we thank you for your power. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Listen, you're here and you know. Listen, you know you got to get things right with God. You, you, you just know it. You've made some decisions that are leading you away from him or have gotten you out of fellowship with him. However that is, there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. You don't have to feel guilty. You don't have to feel shameful. Today, you can start life with a restart. I'm talking to you because God has already been talking to you. You've been hearing him the whole service. Now, there are hundreds of people in here who are praying for you. We knew you were going to come. So we prayed before you got here. If you're listening to me right now and you're saying to yourself, no, I don't need to do this. I'm good. I'm going to stay right here. I'm, nah, I'll, I'll get it right at another time. I need you to know that you're having a conversation with the enemy of your life. And I want you to win today. We want you to win today. Hear me, I don't care where you come from. God wants to meet you right now. Freedom in this place, freedom in this room. If you need to get things right with the Lord today, you want salvation, you want to give your heart to the Lord, or you need to rededicate your heart to the Lord, which means you need to get things back on track. You lost the joy of your salvation. I want you to meet us down here at this altar when I count to three. I just want you to start moving Listen, listen, listen. Your neighbor will gladly get out the way or will walk with you. Don't you worry about this. We are all your friends today. Get down here. One, two, three. Come, 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 come. Come from where you are. Come from where you are. Come from where you are. Come now. Come now. Come now. That's right. Come on. 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 Don't, don't. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come now, come now, come now, come down, come down. That's right, come, 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 come.
down here. Come, 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 come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring the whole family with you. You got to. Come, 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 come. Come now. Come now. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Neighbors, look at the, look, look at the neighbor next to you. Say, neighbor, if you need to walk down to the altar for any reason at all, I will walk with you. I'm your friend. God put me here for a purpose just for you. I'll walk with you in Jesus' name. Come on, that neighbor's ready to grab your hand. Come. I see you coming from the balcony. I see you coming. I see you coming. Come on. I said bring the whole family with you. This is a restart for the whole family. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 We ain't going to stop shouting until you get down here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's room down here. There's room down here. Don't be confused by the crowd. There is room at the cross for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is defeated and God is exalted. The devil is defeated and God is exalted. I said the devil is defeated and God is exalted. Y'all, they're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming from the balcony. I see you. We're going to wait till you get down here. We're going to keep clapping because we believe in your overcoming nature. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Today we come to say yes. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's turning around for me. It won't always be like me. The Lord will perfect the concerning who just said it's too late I need you to come down here come on you just said to yourself it's too late it's already done I need you to get down here that's right I see you be obedient that's right brother that's right still coming (laughs) y'all Spots. No more blind spots. Listen, there are some of you who are here, and God's been speaking to you about joining this church. You know it. Today, you might already be at this altar. 
But if you are in this if you are in this auditorium space, if you are in this sanctuary, and God is speaking to you about connecting, listen to me, listen to me. It's going to be very hard for you to experience new growth when you haven't been planted or you're not connected. Nothing experiences growth unless it's rooted or connected. The only way you're going to get growth, you got to get planted. You got to get connected. So God's been speaking to you about joining this church. I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. Don't worry about these owls. I want you to come. That's right, my sister. I see you coming. That's right. Come on. These souls are coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. That's right. That's right. Be obedient to the Lord. That's right. Be obedient to the Lord. Let's get connected. Let's get planted today. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to turn in my face. Father, we thank you. Woo. <laughs> oh God, I thank you. Now, Father, I pray over every person that is still in the audience that has a prayer request on the tablet of their heart. They are standing in need of your power and your voice. Holy Spirit, Go down every aisle. As I'm calling on your great name, go down and visit every broken heart. Mend every situation. Hallelujah. And not only in this place, but somebody's interceding for somebody in the hospital right now. Father, I pray that your angels will be released from this place and go to Moses Cone, hallelujah. Yeah. Go to Wesley Long, oh God. Go to the rehab center, oh Jesus. Touch like only you can touch, in Jesus' name. I declare that miracles, signs, and wonders, huh, I'm gonna say that again, that miracles, signs, and wonders, shall follow us this week and we will return back in seven days with an overcoming testimony that says though I was weak God made me strong though I was poor God made me rich somebody scream hallelujah come on I will bless the Lord at all times someone shout hallelujah You're at this altar. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. I just want to make the devil real mad right here. I just want to make him mad. I just want to make him mad. If you came down to this altar for salvation or rededication, meaning you came down and said, God, I want to get my life back on track. God, I want to give you my hand. If you came down here for that. Listen, we all family. We love you. I want you to raise your hand, raise your hand. You came down here because you wanted to get things right with the Lord. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I ain't done making the devil mad. Come on, hands up, hands up. You came down here to get it right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 
27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58 souls. Mount Zion, I got a question for you. What does heaven sound like when a son of God? The same power that got Jesus up from the grave is the same power that's in their life. Devil, <laughs> we laugh at you this morning. Hallelujah. These daughters and these sons, their lives have been forever sealed. Now, Holy Ghost, fill them now. In the name of Jesus, we give you honor and praise for all of this in Jesus name listen if you gave your heart to the Lord there's a phone number I need you to text and you've probably gotten a card that I need you to fill out you've done your part help us do our part we want to partner with you in this walk towards Jesus Christ but let me tell you something y'all lean in y'all lean in the devil that wanted to keep you at your seat and keep you there, you beat that devil. Which means, if you beat that devil, you can beat all the devils that are gonna come in front of you. I wanna come down and shake every one of your hands because I believe that your best days are still in front of you. God bless you, God bless you.
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Listen, we know that it's in it and through our giving that we are blessed. We are blessed to be a blessing. And we don't give to God because we have to. We give to God because we get to. We get to be partakers of what Jesus Christ is doing in the earth. Did y'all see just what happened here today? This is what Jesus is doing in the earth. I can't think of a better co-worker than Jesus himself. So let's give as co-workers of Christ. Let's give with conviction. That's why you shouldn't give grudgingly. You should give cheerfully because we know that if God said it, it's going to happen. Listen, you can give by text to give. The instructions are there if you're watching online. You can give there online. It's safe, it's easy, and it's convenient. You can also give by check or by cash. If you need an envelope, it's right there in the seat. It's right there in front of you. However we are giving today, whether you have or you do not have, we want every believer of Jesus Christ to lift up your giving or your hand to the Lord right now. We're going to declare a blessing. If you're lifting up your cell phone, lift that up. Even where right there online, lift your hands up. Because I said we're all going in. I said we're all going in. Father, I thank you for seed going in ground that will yield forth harvest a hundredfold. I thank you that the devourer is rebuked and that the windows of heaven are now open. Father, I thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. Let our lives be a thank you to you. Now, here we go again, trusting God. In Jesus' name we pray. Every heart say amen, amen, amen. To God be the glory. Come on, all the lovers of Jesus Christ, put your hands together. Let's celebrate the Lord.